Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about the Subaru STI S209. Finally the US market gets one of the good ones. So this is the first time an S-Line product has been made exclusively for the US market. There's going to be about 200 of these made for the US market, Subaru STI S209. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how the engine works, what changes they've made with it, and also getting into its water injection system for the intercooler, uh, which is a pretty neat little thing that they did. And it's also something that they did in the 2004 to 2007 Subaru STI. So cool that they have brought it back for this special edition S-Line S209. Also a huge thank you to Matt Moran Motoring for hooking me up with some footage of the engine from the Detroit Auto Show. So the engine is based on the same EJ25 platform. You've likely formed an opinion about it. The engine has been around for quite some time, uh, but of course it is that 2.5 liter boxer engine. And so you've got your four cylinders right here, as you can see, but they have made some significant changes to this engine. So up at the front, you've got a conical air filter and a new induction box that leads you back to a compressor, which is now 8% larger. You also have a 6% larger turbine and out the exhaust, the mufflers have a 17% reduction in airflow restriction. And they've also, of course, added this water injection system. And of course, after passing through that intercooler, the air is distributed in the intake manifold between the four cylinders. All right, so comparing the specs between the base 2019 STI and the S209, the 2019 STI, both of them, of course, having the 2.5 liter boxer four cylinder engine. However, the 2019 STI at 310 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, the S209 with 341 horsepower, an additional 10% or 31 horsepower. They have not yet provided at what RPM that will be at. I will get into that in just a second. And then the 2019 STI is at 290 pound feet from 4,000 RPM to 5,200 RPM. And the only thing we have learned so far about the S209 is that it has an increase in the mid range of about 10% at 3,600 RPM. Now, Car and Driver has said that Subaru estimates the peak torque for the S209 will be 315 pound-feet, and if we were to assume that this was at 4,000 RPM, that'd be an increase of about 8.6%, so somewhat in line with what Subaru has stated of 10% at 3,600 RPM. And then, of course, the 341 uh, horsepower divided by the 310, giving us an increase of 10% power. Uh, so I might guess that, you know, if the torque does taper off towards that higher RPM, then we may see this 341 horsepower at a slightly higher RPM than 6,000. Now, how is it creating this additional power? Well, part of it is through using this larger turbocharger and having more boost. So it's running at 18 PSI versus 16.2 for the 2019 STI. And another big benefit that the S209 has is that it has forged pistons and forged connecting rods. So not only are they lighter, but they are also significantly stronger. All right, so let's chat about the intercooler water spray because this is quite neat. So the process goes, you've got your air, it comes in that filter up front, it's then compressed by the turbocharger, uh, adds 18 PSI of pressure to that air over atmospheric. That air is of course then heated up as it has been compressed from that compressor and then travels into your intercooler. So, you know, an interesting thing that Subaru does with their intercoolers, placing them up top and it's an air to air intercooler. So they kind of get some of the benefits of an air to water intercooler and some of the benefits of an air to air intercooler in that, you know, placement for air to water intercoolers is very good because you can put it back in the engine. And as you can see, the air just comes in through this intake passes into the turbocharger and then immediately can be directed into that intercooler which is above the engine rather than routing that air all the way back to the front. So you can help reduce some of that turbo lag by shortening the path that that air has to travel. You also have the efficiency benefits of an air-to-air -air intercooler. Uh, so even though it's you know not at the front of the engine, which would be ideal from an efficiency standpoint, you're still reliant on ambient air to cool that. So you know the minimum air temperature that you could get would be ambient air versus an air-to-water intercooler system, which your minimum temperature would of course be dependent on the water temperature. And so that would be slightly higher than ambient. So that compressed air is cooled as it travels through this intercooler. And then you have the option, a driver controlled option. So there's a paddle on the steering wheel to spray this water onto the intercooler and use evaporative cooling to help bring down that intake temperature even lower. And so, you know, you, if you're looking at your hot air that's going into the intercooler, then you have cool ambient air going across the intercooler, which is then being heated up 
And then you also have these two water injectors which are spraying water onto the intercooler. So through evaporative cooling, the heat of that intake charge is going to heat up that water and evaporate it away. And in doing so, it's gonna cool the air even further. So you bring down that air temperature and then of course distribute it into the intake manifold between the cylinders sending in a nice, cool, dense, uh, oxygen rich uh, because you've you know, improved the density by dropping down the temperature uh, so you can inject more fuel and thus make more power. Now, I had a few questions about this system, so I reached out to Subaru to learn more about it. And the first one was, you know, what type of fluid can you use with this system? And Subaru plans for you to be able to use just any old regular water. So I asked about this and they said, STI is looking into the fact that, of course, every state has differing water quality. It seems like they do want to be able to let you just use whatever water you want. Uh, though if you do go back and look at the 2007 STI owner's manual, it does specify that you only use pure water. My next question was what happens to the system when you have temperatures below freezing? And so the convenient thing about this, if you're driving in temperatures below freezing, you don't need the thing to work because your ambient air is gonna be so cold that your intercooler is going to be very efficient. So that cold ambient air is going to be able to drop that intake charge temperature quite a bit. So you don't need to rely on this water cooling system in order for that to happen, in order for that peak performance. And so that's the good news about it. Uh, as far as precautions that you wanna take, Subaru says, that you'll wanna keep the tank half empty, half full for the optimists out there, uh, but keep that tank half empty so that there's plenty of room for that water to expand. They said that if you use more than a half full tank uh, of water in there, then you're, you could actually crack that uh, case that the water is sitting in. So you wanna make sure it's at just half full uh, if temperatures are getting very cold. And also the lines for the water injectors are rubber, so they do have the ability to expand if that water within them were to freeze. Now, how much cooler will the intercooler spray actually cool down that intake charge? Well, unfortunately, I don't have a definite answer on this, uh, but I was told by Subaru that they were targeting a drop of 10 degrees Celsius. So if the water was on, they would expect to see this temperature right here exiting the intercooler to be 10 degrees Celsius cooler than if you were not using the intercooler water spray system. Next, will the car be rated for 341 horsepower without the intercooler spray? And the answer is no. And this is pretty interesting and it comes down to how the testing is done in certifying an engine for its horsepower rating. And so you might be thinking, wait a minute, if the thing in cold temperatures can make you know, peak power because ambient temperatures are low enough such that the air coming out means that you don't need uh, the water spray system, then why would you actually see an increase in performance using the intercooler spray uh, for the published numbers of how much power this engine makes? Well, when engines are certified for their power using SAE standard J1349, this means that the testing is going to be done at 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius. And at this temperature, the intercooler spray will actually have a meaningful effect in increasing horsepower. And so based on how the standard works out, it will actually play a role in increasing horsepower. Subaru did not say how much, but they said without the intercooler spray, it would be rated for slightly less horsepower. And finally, how long does the water spray last? So Subaru said that there is a 3.4 liter tank which is placed in the trunk and then you've got a water pump to send that up to the injectors. And they said it will last 5.5 minutes, 330 seconds, uh, maximum operational duration for this system. So if you kind of do the math and assume that that 5.5 minutes drains the entire tank, that means you're injecting a liter of water about every 100 seconds. So on the car, you've got little paddle shifters. Of course, it's a manual transmission, so these little shifters aren't shifters. They're actually for controlling the intercooler water spray. So these little paddles, I think that is such a cool thing. You know, anytime that you can push a button on your steering wheel that then provides more power uh, is quite neat in my book. Even, you know, even though I don't think the, the overall difference in power is gonna be all that significant. If I were to take a guess based on the fact that that car has 341 horsepower, based on the fact that they're targeting you know, a 10 degrees Celsius reduction in air temperature, I would say that the system's probably not gonna give them any more than 10 horsepower when it's being used. Uh, so not something that honestly you would end up feeling, but still a very real uh, actual difference that would be made. Uh, you would actually produce more power. So it is a cool thing. It's kind of an engaging thing with the driver and a throwback to the 04 to 07 STIs. 
which I think is very cool. And you know, let's say you're going out on a track day, you could perhaps put some ice water in that tank uh, so that you had some ice cold water that you're spraying on the intercooler, bring temperatures down even more and make even more power uh, doing so. So quite cool, you know, kind of playing around with the system, the driver engagement involved with it. Thank you all so much for watching and a big thanks to Matt Moran Motoring for hooking me up with some footage. I'll include a link to his video on the S209 if you'd like to check that out where he got to walk around it at the Detroit Auto Show. Thank you all so much for watching.